An eerie feeling across the nation as we start to see more empty streets. Look at New York, Los Angeles, Las Vegas. But this morning, there is some good news as the Trump administration discusses new ways to fight the coronavirus pandemic. Good morning to you. We want to thank you all so much for joining us. I'm Stella Escobedo. And I'm Eric Connors. So glad you're with us here. We're going to bring you up to date with the latest information coming from the White House here in just a moment. But first, let's get you caught up on the latest numbers coming in. In the U.S., there are now more than 9,500 confirmed cases and 150 deaths. Remember, we had 110 yesterday. Doctors are also warning we could be 45 days or more from seeing the peak of this. In San Diego County, there are now 80 confirmed cases. That's up from 60 yesterday, but no deaths have been reported. So some good news there. Members of the Coronavirus Task Force provided another update from the White House this morning. So the biggest thing that they talked about is the FDA slashing red tape and fast-tracking antiviral medicine. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. President Trump announced the FDA has approved two new drugs already on the market to treat coronavirus. The nice part is it's been around for a long time. So we know that if it if if things don't go as uh, planned, it's not going to kill anybody. But it should be noted a vaccine is still a long way off. It's a vaccine trial. Um, currently being performed. It's a phase one trial, so it's the earliest study that gets done. We expect that to take 12 months to get depletion to actually a time where we could approve a vaccine. Wednesday, we President year. Trump signed we a Korean War era law that compels manufacturing companies to step up production of medical equipment and protective gear for health workers. It's a medical war. We have to win this war. It's very important. The president is fighting on two fronts, the battle against the virus and the battle to save the economy. We took the best economy we've ever had and we said, stop, you can't work. You have to stay home. 70,000 more people filed unemployment claims last week and those numbers will rise. GM. Ford and Chrysler Fiat were the latest companies to shut down operations. They won't be able to get 40 hours. Then we got subemployment and unemployment that they'll be file, able to file for next week. Congress is negotiating with the White House for a stimulus package which could top a trillion dollars and is likely to include money being sent directly to Americans. Money for people from the middle class on down, period. COVID-19 has now hit Capitol Hill. Congressman Mario diaz Balart from Florida and Ben McAdams from Utah both confirm they've tested positive for the virus. Skylar Henry, CBS News, the White House. And Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he will keep the Senate in session until it passes the stimulus package to help the economy. And as we mentioned before, President Trump is directing the FDA to investigate whether an existing drug given to malaria patients can also be used to treat the coronavirus. Our News 8's Alicia Summers is joining us now to talk more about this. Alicia, this is potentially some very good news here. It has the potential to be some very good news indeed because it's a drug that's already out there. It's called uh, chloroquine. It's already been given to malaria patients. I spoke with Dr. Georgine Nanos from Kind Health Group in Encinitas. She says that the medical community has been talking about this drug as a possible treatment for coronavirus for a few months now, but there's just not enough data yet. Also, it doesn't change anything right now, but it's good to be optimistic. Right now, there are no proven therapies for COVID-19. Health officials have said a vaccine ready for public use could take up to 12 to 18 months, but some scientists have claimed that early in the outbreak, the anti-malaria drug chloroquine, which also has been around for a long time, could be a potential treatment for the new virus. Very powerful drug in different forms, and it's shown very encouraging very, very encouraging early results. We're going to be able to make that drug available almost immediately. It's also important to note that the FDA commissioner also said that it's important not to provide false hope. We're also speaking with a well-respected scientist featured in a documentary called Pandemic. Uh, He weighs in on chloroquine new for you uh, at 5 o'clock tonight. For now, we'll send it back to you.
Alicia, thank you for that. Also this, thousands of passengers aboard Disney's Wonder Cruise ship are in San Diego this morning, a day earlier than planned. The ship arrived to the port of San Diego at about 7 o'clock this morning following the company's decision to suspend all cruises amidst the coronavirus pandemic. We know this. So Shannon Handy is there right now. Shannon, do we know when these passengers are going to get off? Do we know if anyone is showing symptoms of coronavirus? As we saw in San Francisco when that ship docked, it took days for people to get off. Yes, yeah, Stella, Disney has told us that at this point, no one on board the ship has shown any signs of coronavirus. In fact, passengers are allowed to get off the ship starting around noon today, so just within the next hour. Now, if you take a look right now, you can see some passengers and possibly crew members standing outside. We're told 2,000 passengers along with 900 crew members are on board, but again, no one has shown any signs of coronavirus. Let's take a look at some video taken just a short time ago. Again, you can see the people standing outside the ship looking out onto the Embarcadero. The Disney Wonder is back from a two week journey along the Panama Canal. It left New Orleans on March 6th. The ship was supposed to arrive in San Diego tomorrow after a stop in Cabo and Puerto Vallarta. But because Disney has decided to suspend cruises, it arrived early for going Mexico. Now, I spoke with a local chaplain here who helps cruise crew members run errands or get supplies they need once they're off ships. It's a service he provides year round, but he says it's obviously much different these days. They're concerned and uh, uh, they just asked me that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, I'll remember their, them in, in our prayers and uh, that, uh, of course, uh, they're also praying that, uh, you know, that this, this, uh, this problem will be, you know, soon to be, you know, uh, be done. And back out here live, I've been monitoring social media and passengers have talked about how the crew members are constantly cleaning and sanitizing the ship and they're also keeping them well informed. In fact, they were all sent letters about the situation. Now we hope to speak with some of those passengers once they disembark again. That will start around noon today, but keep in mind this ship is here one day early. So Disney has given these passengers the option. If you want to get off now, you can, but you can't come back on. But if you'd like to stay on the ship because maybe you didn't make arrangements since they are here a day early, you can stay on board. In addition, those passengers will receive some money back since the cruise was cut a day short and they are also being offered a discount on a future Disney cruise. So we will stay out here and monitor the situation and we'll check back in with you guys around noon. Back to you. All right, Shannon, thanks for the latest on that. And San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner has unveiled a massive relief package for local businesses affected by closures. It includes a $4 million fund in grants and 0% loans. This is all to help businesses stay afloat. So important, right? The mayor says more information on how businesses can apply for those loans will be announced soon. The fight against coronavirus, of course, changing our routines uh, even more today than yesterday. This morning, expanded health orders are in effect around the county to prevent the spread. News 8's Netta Ronport live outside of YMCA in Kearney Mesa. And Netta, that's one of the places impacted by these new orders. Yeah, they are shut down here at the YMCA. As many of you know, they offer more than gyms and workouts. They have child care here and preschool. In fact, normally kids would be right behind me at the playground here at the YMCA enjoying the sun that's shining out here right now. That is not the case. Uh, the new county rules does change the way daycare is operating. Uh, a lot of them now can only have smaller groups of kids. Now, there's still a great need. We spoke with the YMCA child care services director. She's actually still helping families uh, get into touch with child care programs that they need and take a listen to what she said and who she says is in need of this. We are getting a lot of calls from different health care organizations, hospital associations, that they definitely have a lot of staff that are in, in great need of child care so that their nurses and their doctors and their custodians and their cooks and everyone else that's so essential to keeping us healthy can come to work. Yeah, since they all need to come to work, they do need child care because, as we all know, most kids are no longer in school right now. So doctors, nurses, paramedics, law enforcement, all the essential emergency responders, those who work in public service, now being asked to work overtime, many of them. And their children are out of school. They're desperately searching for daycare options. Now, the good news is, is the executive director of child care services, who you just heard from here at the YMCA, tells us there are more than 4,000 daycare options still right now in San Diego. 
despite the new regulations, these smaller daycares are still available for families. In fact, they still have room to take in your kids. Now, the rules do require groups of 10 or less. They can stay together with the same child care provider using the same facility, but they cannot intermingle with other kids in other groups. The groups cannot mix and that the teachers are consistent with each group so that there's not an increased spread of, um, of the virus. Of course, these measures are being taken now with the coronavirus safety precautions now implemented by the county. The county also encouraging even young children to keep that social distance. Now, the YMCA is actually working with families to connect them with child care programs. So if you're still looking for help in that uh, realm, you can give them a call. We do have the number at the bottom of your screen, 1-800-481-2151. They have advisors on hand uh, all day long to assist with any families who still need those daycare facilities. And that's the very latest here from the YMCA. We'll send it back to you. And the families can use the help right now. Netta, thank you. A special shout out to all the volunteers who are helping make sure San Diego families are fed. Here they are at the Food Distribution Center in Chula Vista. It's being put on by the community through Hope, one of the only South Bay providers still giving out food. To keep people healthy, workers put meals directly in the trunks of cars. That may, uh, that, that, that way they don't get the coronavirus. Um, they were joined by Chula Vista police who were providing traffic control. And just because the coronavirus has stopped San Diegans in their tracks with businesses closed, jobs lost, and put lives on hold, there is something you can do to help. Now is the time to come together to help our neighbors impacted by this ongoing health crisis. If you're able, please join News 8, the San Diego Foundation, and our partners, and give to the San Diego COVID-19 Response Fund. Your donation will help provide assistance with food security, rent, utility bills, and income replacement, as well as things like gap funding and no-interest business and community loans. 100% of donations will go to organizations helping San Diegans impacted by coronavirus. Donate now at sdfoundation.org slash COVID-19 or our News Aid app. It's so incredible just in the last couple of days how much money has been raised. So last time I checked, we were at $4, Four million. million. It was $2 million just yesterday, mm -hmm. but we got a long ways to go because so many people are, are put out of work with this. Mm -hmm. and so, it's going uh, to help a lot of people. Go to our website, cbsa.com, click on the hot button.